the humble bottom bracket. It's probably the last component on the bike that people think is an upgrade. It's an afterthought. It's just something that you get when you get a new set of cranks so that you can use those cranks on your bike. But after my experience using Sugino 75s for the past few years and using it with a couple of different bottom brackets I've learned, it's actually a super important component of the bike that can completely change the way that your bike rides. That is why the bottom bracket is the most overlooked bike component and even though you can't see it, even though you don't feel it directly, even though it doesn't give you a bunch of fixy points, you may want to consider upgrading your bottom bracket. Speaking of bottom brackets, my bottom bracket is on a Wabi special and this portion of the video is sponsored by Wabi Cycles. If you want to find out how you can get the most fun out of your bike in 180 seconds or less, check out me and Wabi's new series called 3 Minute Thursday by clicking the card above or by seeing the card at the end of this video. By the way, according to my YouTube stats, about half of you watching this video aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So if you want to watch more fixed gear videos just like this one, do yourself a favor, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon below so you can watch more fixed gear and cycling videos just like this one. Subscribing is totally free and you can unsubscribe at any time as we make our way towards 100k fixie foos. Thanks guys for supporting the channel. If you've ever had the bearings in your bottom bracket go crunchy on you, you know the utmost importance of the bottom bracket to your bike's ride quality and to your enjoyment of your bike. The bottom bracket is the heart of the drivetrain. And although you don't see it, and although it's often very underappreciated, it's what allows your cranks to work with the rest of the bike. It is what converts your pedaling motion into getting you from point A to point B and your back pedaling motion into going skirt. And if you've ever had a crunchy bottom bracket, it just makes you not to ever want to ride your bike because it makes every pedal stroke feel like the bike is going to fall apart and it makes you not want to put as much power through your pedals. Contrast that with having a fresh bottom bracket that is buttery smooth and well tuned, it legitimately makes it feel like an entirely new bike. It's just crazy. <laughs> Now you can really use that chain ring. Where's the, where's the crunchy at, man? But if we take it a step further and actually get a nice bottom bracket versus just whatever bottom bracket was cheapest and that works with your cranks, even then it can make your bike feel like an entirely different bike and it can take your riding experience to the next level. For example, I've been riding Sugino 75s on and off for the past few years. I'm extremely familiar with how the crank set feels and for the first few years, I rode this crank set with a Tongue bottom bracket. Certainly a very good bottom bracket made in Japan. Maybe some of them are made in Taiwan if they're cheaper ones, but the one I had was made in Japan. Really good, precise, well-built bottom bracket. Rode that one for a few years and pedaled along, felt great, was super happy with it. But two years ago, I switched over to the oddly antiquated Sugino 75 NJS bottom bracket and switching between a Tongue to an NJS bottom bracket again made the bike feel completely different. It felt like whatever I was putting into the pedals was getting transferred into the drivetrain and propelling me forward. Uphills felt ever so slightly more responsive and easier to get up and stopping, skidding, backpedaling, that all felt, again, ever so slightly easier and more responsive to my inputs, making my bike just that little bit more fun to ride, all just by changing the bottom bracket. Super surprising, because I thought it was just like, a bottom bracket is a bottom bracket, right? You just get the one that works with the cranks and then you off on your merry way. In my experience, going from a decent bottom bracket, like a pretty good bottom bracket to a boutique, bougie <laughs> bottom brackets was actually a big enough difference to justify the cost between a $60 bottom bracket and a nearly $200 bottom bracket. Almost. As good as the loose ball bearing NJS bottom brackets are, I also kind of hate them. I would say only about 50% of the time is the loose ball bearing NJS bottom bracket actually finely tuned enough where you can actually experience those benefits. There are a lot of parts to the NJS bottom brackets and that makes them 
really finicky to install. It requires a lot of tools, a lot of proprietary tools, mind you. And once you do actually install them correctly and fine tune the bearings and you got just the right amount of grease in there and you put enough torque on the lock ring, which is a huge pain in the ass, by the way, because the lock ring, even though it is NJS, is still made of like Gouda cheese and the notches deform and make it hard to take off and maintain in the long run. Even once you jump through all of those hoops, they are still super finicky and, in my experience, unreliable. If you're riding out in the rain, the grease will wash out from the bearings and you might start to feel some friction in your bottom brackets. Even if the humidity changes, like, I've, I, I've just gone from, from going from like summer to fall to winter and that was enough in the change in humidity, knock something in the bottom bracket system out of whack and to cause occasional squeaks. Even just going from California to here in Mexico, it's a, it was a big enough change in humidity that now it sounds like I have a tiny baby bird in my bottom bracket whenever I pedal at 12 o'clock. So although an NJS bottom bracket will by far give you the best experience for riding your bike and- No puedo recordar aquí. Ah, okay. <laughs> Gracias. Apparently I can't record here, so I will continue this rant elsewhere. So while the Sugino 75 bottom bracket is like borderline, like a transcendental experience when you're riding in and it's nice and finely tuned, you only get that experience about 50% of the time. Even when I had it professionally installed by a professional mechanic at Faith Gear who installs probably dozens if not hundreds of these things every year because it's super humid in Taiwan and because I ride in the rain a lot it would start to creak after about a week every single time and I would have to bring it back to the shop and have it retuned and readjusted they're just super finicky and even when I'm doing it myself and even when the weather is more stable and less humid like it is in my hometown in Sacramento it still will only last about six months until you have to get in there and readjust and repack it with grease. And when it's not the best bottom bracket that you've ever ridden that really makes you passionate about bottom brackets because it is that good, it's creaky, it's squeaky, you feel knocks at certain spots in the pedal stroke once it gets out of adjustment and it feels like a super cheap and frustrating bottom bracket that makes you not want to ride your bike. But that just goes to show how important bottom brackets actually are. And if you want to spend the $150, $200 for super boutique bottom brackets, I am sure that you will not regret your decision. If you're thinking about something like a fancy C-post, be much better off spending that money on a bottom bracket. It can be that good. But as for my thoughts on the Sugino 75 bottom bracket, if I may quote Reggie fils if it's not fun, why bother? And it's only fun 50% of the time. The other 50% of the time, it is extremely frustrating. Hello, doggy. <laughs> and the thing with the Sugino 75 bottom bracket is that the design has been around since probably the 1940s, if not earlier, and they have not changed it a single bit. Technology gets better. Just because it was the first design doesn't mean that it is the best design. And while it's modularity, gotta hate that word, <laughs> allows you to really fine tune the bottom bracket and to really pack it and make it serviceable and to really service it to last you the entire rest of your life, the quality of the time that you spend servicing that bottom bracket, even if you do like working on bikes, it's probably not going to be a fun one because it is a lot of trial and error and a lot of redoing your work and the way that you tune it for one season may not be the right way to tune it and adjust it for a different season. And where I come from, there's, there's about four, well, three and a half these days <laughs> per year. <laughs> Luckily, there are some really nice sealed bearing bottom brackets for Sugino 75s. Once I get back to the United States, I will be throwing the 75 bottom bracket up on eBay and be replacing it with either the 75 sealed bearing because Sugino finally caught on and realized that non-NJS riders kind of prefer sealed bearing stuff or something like the Phil Wood bottom brackets. And if those sealed bearing bottom brackets are at least 80% as good as the NJS bottom bracket at its best, 
while being more reliable and less finicky, I can happily ride that. It's just that the 75 bottom bracket has really surprisingly turned me into a bottom bracket nerd because it is that good, and I have learned from it that bottom brackets are that important and by far the most overlooked fixed gear component. And fix your favorite shoutouts to Zane Kolnick, Ryan Witz, Robbie Andaya, Kelvin Ho, Justin Javier, Julian Corona, Henry Grant, David Kay, and Brandon Black for helping to make these fix gear videos possible through the support on Patreon. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter, so be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.